All right, so Ben here with Shamrock Dirt Work. My audio is not good for this particular video segment, so I'm just going to narrate. So right here, I'm showing you my tracks. I'm going to replace these because I cut them. And I'm going to pan down here and show you this big gash. I don't know what I went over, but right inside there, you can see the, the cables. And once those cables break, it's only a matter of time for that track will just completely separate. So what I did, I bought some hybrid tracks. You can see down in there, those are the cables. It's cut pretty good. And these are the these are the tracks I bought from Midwest Equipment. They're hybrid tracks. It's a metal plate. It's a all steel track. But each track has a rubber pad on it, which is good for me because I do a lot of demolition and I go across driveways. And this right here is one of the individual pads. It's about a half inch thick steel plate. The rubber itself is very durable. So that being said, let's loosen these tracks up and let's get to it. Okay, so there's a little inspection port. Well, it's not really an inspection port, it's an access panel. I believe, what, what did you say it was, a 14 millimeter? Yeah. 14 millimeter. Perfect. And you're going to watch your, this is your idler. When we open this, there's a little grease fitting. So here's the fitting. So you got your grease zerk. And then this is actually threaded into a, a larger fitting. And that's what we're going to loosen. Now when you loosen it, it's going to expel a lot of grease. Don't worry, it's just going to get everywhere. It's better to use a deep socket because uh, that grease fitting does stick out some, but this will work. If you look, you'll start seeing grease coming out. I'm just loosening this by hand and you'll see the grease. There it is, it's starting to ooze out. That's starting to ooze out, and you'll see that pulley, it'll start to move. All that slack's coming out. You can see it's a lot of grease. I'm going to pull this. Well, that got it. So this is the fitting I was referring to. Here's your grease fitting, and then this is the housing it sits in. And there's a check valve in here to prevent the grease from uh, backing out, because you can actually take this grease fitting out, this grease zerk, if you have to replace it. And you're not worried about the grease shooting back out at you. So if you if you ever take this off and grease is coming out, you should replace this this fitting. That was a good time to clean this out, getting this excess grease out. You can see that's a lot of grease. So have a couple tubes of grease on hand, just in case you mess up. Okay, so now that the uh, the tension is taken out of the track. I'm going to get up in the machine, we're going to start it up, uh, and I'm going to slowly roll the track, and Ernie's going to be on the back side with a pry bar, and we're going to slowly pull that track off.
So that's how you do it. Uh, that's why you call in the experts at ERS Services. So now's a good time. We're going to get this track pulled out of the way. Now's a good time to check your rollers. You know, you're going to check your idler wheel. Be careful. There's a lot of tight clearances. You don't want to pinch your fingers in here, but that seems to roll pretty good. And check your uh, your drive sprocket. Well, let's get this pu track pulled out of the way. And we will unspool the small fortune sitting right there. So now we're going to get this pulled out of the way. And then we're going to tip those over, unroll them, and inspect them. Okay, so the track's out of the way. You're gonna listen for the bearings. They sound pretty good. Just give them a good roll. See how well they roll. They don't feel loose. I'd say they're pretty good. Okay, so the tracks are on both sides to the point where we're going to uh, use the grease gun to push out the idler wheel. That's going to stretch out the tracks. There's a different tension right here that has a rubber track and steel track. So since now we have steel tracks, so the gap you're looking for gap A. That's between the, uh, I guess you'd call them the alignment cleat on the track itself and the, the, the idler, the roller. And you're going to go to the middle because that's where your most slack is going to be, right in the middle. 
So we're gonna lift it up and it looks like we're looking at around 1.6 to 2.2 inches. And it does make a difference because on the rubber track, it's about one inch to 1.6. So you do not want to over tighten these. So uh, let's stretch them out. <coughs> That track needs to be off the ground, raised on it. Okay. We've got a quarter inch to go. That'll do it for now. That's good enough. Other side? Other side. Uh -huh. okay. Okay, so we are done with putting these tracks on the machine. I gotta say, they look awesome. Awesome, awesome. As far as the quality goes, they're heavy, they're solid. I think they're gonna work out very good. I'm so excited to use them. Like I said, Midwest Equipment. Uh, this is where I bought them. And as far as I'm concerned, I should never have to buy a set of tracks again. So let's see how they sound. Yep, they're awesome. Can't wait to use them. I'm going to start a big tree clearing job tomorrow. I could not have done this without Ernie from ERS Services. Uh, I'm going to make him a nice video for his website. And uh, like I said, giving them a call. This was just so much fun. All right, so uh, on to the next project. Thanks for watching.